All right, hello everybody. Um, just testing a few things out here before we get started, but um, let's see. Let me know when you get signed in. All right, looks like we have a few people logging in here. Hope everyone's doing well. We've been doing all right over here at the Hedenstrom household. A little bit, uh, you know, stir crazy, but oh, Phelan Brothers, hello. Looks like it might just be you two here. You guys don't live together, do you? Raymond, hey, good to see you. Gotcha. I see. Okay. So, you, so you're both in different spots. Um, all right. So let's just recap quick. Um, hopefully more people can sign in. Uh, looks like maybe there's four people signed in. Um, Okay. So. 
All right, so yeah, we're going to go through what we've already done. Um, and this is just kind of the overview of the Jazz Standards Project, which is due next Monday at midnight. Um, so I hope that everyone's having a good time with it, or you know, maybe you haven't uh, quite started yet. But either way, um, this is the... Uh, the projects we've been doing the um, we've been doing the tune I could write a book and we've already gone through parts one two and three now we need to go through part four looks like Sam and Daniel are here he hello um, thanks for joining us uh, okay so Let me know if you have any questions on the last week's material and if you've started the project and you weren't sure about something. Even if it's like a tune specific type thing, then um, we can maybe even chat about that and use your, your tune as an e example. But let's, um, let's go here. So I'm going to share my screen. And let's see if I can do this. Okay. Yeah, so let me know if this um, share screen works or doesn't work. Basically, um, we're going to go through the more musical stuff today, which is good because last week we did so much historical stuff. So the tune that we're doing just as an example is I could write a book. So I got this lead sheet for it. Um, and this particular lead sheet has it in the key of C, C major. So hopefully you can hear. Hopefully you can hear that over the speakers. All right, so I'm just going to play through it quick. Just the chords. I'm not sure that this is actually sharing the screen, so I'm going to actually try something. All right. I think that might do it. Oh, may need to turn it up. Thanks, Patrick. Hopefully that's better. All right, so that's just kind of playing through the chords a little bit. Um, so I'm going to go through and just look at these questions, and let's just go through them systematically. And again, let me know if you have any questions here. Oh, good, better. Good, good. Thank you. Okay, so number one question is what is the form? So um, looking at this, I would say that you see you have an eight bar phrase and then you have an eight bar first ending back to the first eight bar phrase and then a eight bar second ending so out of those two a b a c would be the the one that fits 
So this is A, B, A, C. So the first eight is the A. The first ending is the B, back to the f A. And then the second ending is the C. So this is a common form you'll see. Um, and we're just going to call it 32 bar form because when you add up all sets of eight bars, um, it adds up to 32. All right, so are there, so this, now this next section is a little more descriptive. So we'll go over some examples here of what you might write. Um, all right, so melody, are there themes that occur throughout? So let's just play through the melody and we'll see. Maybe I'll do it on sax. That might be a little better. screwed up a little bit at the end but um i would say there's a couple of themes here um where it goes so i would say that's a little thematic thing and then so for that i would say during the a section there's a repeated pattern in the melody which features three consecutive quarter notes. Okay, so um you also notice throughout this piece that there's a lot of this one, two, three, four, one. Do da da. So what let's say throughout the piece there are a number of themes or a, a number of occurrences of the following rhythm quarter, half, quarter. Something like that. Just anything that can kind of describe it so that I can understand what you're saying. Um, you might have to get a little creative with how you describe stuff. All right. Um, and then during the first ending, bum, bum, ba, da, 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 um, the first ending features a repetitive two bar theme that mostly, well, that varies slightly in rhythm, but also works or but also um, qualifies as thematic material okay cool um, this same pattern is also repeated in a similar way during the second ending Okay, so I think that will suffice.
that's about as long as it, as your answer should be, I think. Um, again, let me know what kind of questions you have. Uh, okay, so what is the mood of this piece? Um, I would say it's definitely not somber. Definitely not sad. I mean, certainly not the... Um, not the musical content. Uh, well for the next question, we're going to have to write, uh, look up the lyrics. So I'm just going to look them up right now. And um, if you look at the lyrics, they're really not super sad or deep in that sense. Not, or, or, you know, they're not... Um, dark they're a little more bright and cheer cheerful I guess so we're just gonna say um, the the piece is fairly happy and cheerful the use of major tonalities um, throughout uh, let's see what should we say the use of major tonalities throughout the piece contributes to this sense of happy happiness and the chords primarily stay within the realm of C major. Okay. Um, the melody features pitches, feature, uh, features happy sounding notes such as the B of a C major seven chord which is the um, uh, the major seventh, a very um, bright and joyful uh, note of the chord. Just stuff like this where you're just trying to find some ways to describe it. I know this is a little bit of a little bit of a dull um, lecture in the sense that it's very much you know project oriented and so we're really just trying to get through the project but um, also if you're just tuning in or haven't uh, let me know who's here just uh, go ahead and um, say something in the chat so I know who's along for the ride Okay, um, so let's see. What else can we say about the mood of the piece? Um, it has somewhat of a mellow flavor and a smooth sound to it all right that sounds pretty good i think that'll be fine um are there lyrics yes there are lyrics and what do they convey oh hey hans bear wizard is hans sweet um i want to be a bear wizard all right so let's go through the lyrics together so I'm just gonna read them out loud if they ask me I could write a book about the way you walk and whisper and look I could write a preface on how we met so the world would never forget and the simple secret of the plot is just to tell them that I love you a lot then the world discovers as my book ends how to make two lovers of friends if they ask me I could write a book about the way you walk and whisper and look I could write a preface on how we met so the world we would never forget, never, never forget. And the sec simple secret of the plot is just to tell them that I love you a lot. Then the world discovers as my book ends 
how to make two lovers of friends so surprise surprise a song about relationships and love <laughs> um just like every other song in the history of songs no but um doesn't surprise me though since it's for a broadway musical which tend to be very you know s tied up in different relationships that happen in a story so um i would say the lyrics are about um falling in love but it's sort of it it's not super super deep to me it except that the lyrics are pretty clever so i would say the focus of the lyrics is falling in love with someone but there's not a lot of tragedy or heartbreak in these lyrics it's more about the um, happiness and joy of a new relationship the metaphor of writing a book about this story suggests that it is conveying a, a quote-unquote fairy tale like feeling of being in a relationship okay so I and then also let's see it's um, happy but also clever and somewhat tongue-in-cheek in the sense that it references its own awareness of the story being told all right so that would be fine that would suffice for this question some see these are all about a paragraph um, if you you know if you use full sentences and um, you know use intelligent descriptions of stuff it'll be uh, I'm pretty pretty flexible with these questions as long as they're not just kind of like oh you threw this question away and didn't really spend any time on it um, all right what are the challenges of playing the melody if any well it's not the most friend horn friendly key because for trumpet it's D major and for sax it's A major and more common keys would be F B flat E flat but it's not really um, enough of a problem to necessarily consider it much of a challenge so I would say it's really not very challenging there's a couple of leaps in here that might be tricky if you're playing a brass instrument so let's just say um, the key is friendly but not the most friendly or familiar key for horn players and then the melody is easy to play for the most part the range is very moderate with no extreme highs or lows but there are a couple of larger leaps for example a minor sixth in the a section and a minor seventh in the C section cool so that would be a pretty good answer for that um, 
All right, so that's more of the descriptive stuff. Let's just see if anyone has any questions. Doesn't look like it. So hopefully that's fairly self-explanatory. Now this next part is um, more about the harmonic implications of the chords. So um, let's first of all find the key centers and I'm going to show you how to do this. So um, what I have here is I have the lead sheet open in preview which is just like the default Mac PDF reader that's available. Um, and so if you're on a Mac you might be able to use some of these tools. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. But if you go to this little marker looking thing, click on it, you get these tools such as you can create a signature which I use to sign documents. Um, there's a text thing, there's a drawing thing. So I like to use this text box thing to um, mark up PDFs. Uh, and if you're you know, using another software like a Windows or something like that, I'm sure that there's a similar thing. Um, but yeah, so clearly the key center is C major because it's um, because it's C major, A minor seven, which is the relative minor, D minor seven, G seven, which is two five, so it's one six two five one. So really, that's just the rhythm changes um, intro. Ba -do -da -do -dum. Five one five one. And then here's a passing diminished chord. Sharp one, sharp one diminished. Uh, two, five. And then here we have some passing chords, but it's still in root. It's a root chord, but in first position. And then D minor seven, G seven, which is a two, five. Um, one, or uh, six, two, five. Now this here we have some modulation so but for the first a section um, we're all in the key of C so we're gonna label that key of C major okay good we're using Helvetica alright so let's see maybe I'll put it in italics just to make sure it's set apart from the let's see Yeah, there we go. Key of C major. Okay. All right, so it's in the key of C major for this whole A section. And then here it's still in the key of C major. Now here, 2, 5 to G. So we have... So the G in the key of C is a dominant. So the fact that we're in a major seven means that we've modulated to a new key. So we're gonna create a new text box and we're gonna say G major. And we're gonna just put that right there. So um, if you want, you can generate some lines let's see if I can figure that out oh okay here we go oh yeah here we go so you know you can maybe put a bracket over it or something like that um, if you want again that you could you could mark this up any way you want you could mark this up by hand on a piece of paper you print it out or you could even write out the chords yourself and mark it up um, you know any any way that you can just clearly show that you're marking up your chord changes that's fine and you can just set, uh, scan it or take a picture of it and turn it into a PDF to upload alright so now we have five of one in the new key of E minor so now we're gonna which we I guess we could consider part of G major because it's the relative minor but um, let's consider it 
a new key center. So we're going to type in E minor. All right. Hope this lecture, everything feels boring. What you know, The lecture feels boring when you're not in person. It just feels, I don't know. Hope Hopefully this is uh, connecting with you guys. All right. If you need me to like put on a funny hat and dance around or something, maybe I, maybe I will. But um, now we're back to two, five. Uh, let's see. Um, hmm. uh, we're still in G here. Let's say we'll just kind of do a hybrid because it's, you know, again, this is sort of up for debate. We're, this isn't quite as strict as a theory class where you're like, what's the pivot chord? I mean, you could do that with this piece for sure. But, and we actually will a little bit um, in one of the next steps. Okay, so then it goes back to C major here. So let's type that in. Because it's the two and the five of C major. So technically you could consider these the pivot chords. All right, and then it goes back to the key of C major at the beginning, second ending. Clearly we're in A minor now because it's hovers over that tonality for two whole measures so we'll mark that as an a to the minor all right let's see let's see maybe i'll okay so now looks like we've gotten to f major temporarily So we're going to type that in, F major. Okay, because it's a 2, 5, 1 to F major, so that's an uh, indicator. And then mm, temporarily we could consider that, let's, let's write it in. So a 2, 5 there signifies a reference to the key of E flat major. This would be something I wouldn't necessarily mark you down or anything if you didn't mark that there, but um, but I'm going to. And then here we go back to, to C. Okay, so here we go. C major, and for some reason that stupid thing is not, there we go, okay. Why is that R cutting off? Well, maybe that's just what the R looks like. No, it's cutting off. Oh, well. C'est la vie, as they say in France. Okay. So, there we go. So, there's the... Um, so, you don't have to write anything here. You just write it onto the sheet. Third and seventh guide tones. Okay, so... You can use a um, software if you want. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's just to kind of give a example here. So I'm going to create a new file. Um, let's see. Write. Oh, I could write a book. Guide tones. Rogers. Art. Again, if you just have some staff paper and um, let's see, if you just have some staff paper and a pencil and you want to just do it that way, that's totally cool. I'm just doing it this way because it's easier to show you 
what it is. All right, so show. All right, guide tones. I could write a book. So, let's see. I'll just do eight bars of it because I don't want to spend too much time on something you already know how to do. But let's just, just to do our due diligence, we will go ahead. So, C major seven, A minor seven, and this is Sibelius that I'm using. Um, if you wanted to share what kind of software you use to do this kind of thing um, go ahead and share that in the comments I'm trying to keep you guys involved as much as I can um, as awkward as it is via online lectures definitely miss seeing you guys in person something that I'm sure we all miss seeing each other but um, makes you appreciate you know the privilege it is to work with students like you so thought I'd throw that little nugget of appreciation in there all right okay what is so and then G major seven I've been trying to do some of the things in this time that I don't normally get to do, like watching some different movies. I've kind of been watching a bunch of classic movies, you know. Sometimes you have that list of movies where you're, um, you know, everyone says you should see this movie and then you just don't get around to it or whatever. And so I've been watching a lot of these classic movies like Casablanca, and Citizen Kane and these old movies. Um, pretty cool stuff. Music is incredible. All right, so I'm gonna what I'm gonna do here, and you can do this or not, is I'm just gonna put the chord tones in the bass so that there's something to listen to. All right, so thirds and sevenths. I'm actually just going to play them in on my keyboard here just to save time. Oops. Okay, cool. So, um, let's save this to the desktop. All right, so there's our, I could write a book guide tones. Let's play it back. So that sounds correct. All right, so I just put a little comment in the chat section asking about which notation software you like to use. Um, okay, so 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to export this as a PDF to the desktop so that I can include it when I upload this for you to check out later. All right. So we did that, third and seven guide tones um, with chord symbols. Identify applicable 251 and Roman numeral patterns, label them on the lead sheet. Okay, so this is what we're what you kind of do in classical theory class with just labeling Roman numeral analysis. Um, not every jazz tune really works that well with Roman numeral analysis, but um, but this one actually ends up working pretty good. Um, so we're just gonna just kind of do this like that. Let's see. If you hear my son crying in the background, it's because we're trying to potty train him. And sometimes he does really good and sometimes he uh, melts down a little bit. Um, but um, Muse score for Hans. Nick uses Finale with a flame attached to it. Um, cool. Yeah. No, they're all good. I Muse score for Daniel. Yeah, nice. Um, yeah, I've always used Sibelius um, for whatever reason. Actually, I'll tell you the reason. It's because uh, a friend of mine gave me a pirated copy when I was a freshman in college, and that's where I learned to use it. And I don't endorse pirating software, but um, but that was the day and age where people would just pirate music like crazy. Um, so I'm not condoning my behavior, pirating the software. Um, but, you know, I certainly don't judge if, if anyone does that. Um, but yeah, I, I don't do that anymore. But it was helpful at the time in that I got to learn um, Sibelius. So, Muse score for Raymond, pen and manuscript paper for Patrick. See, that's the thing. That's what you do. Um, that's like the, to me, that's the best way to learn how to write music. Pen and uh, pen and staff paper. Um, or pencil and staff paper if you want to have the ability to erase. All right, so one <laughs> can totally sidetracked here. Okay, the only thing stopping me from using Sibelius is the price. I know it's just it's offensively high. It's not even worth. Ah, it's ridiculous. I know it. I bought it several years ago with a student discount, and I've just been using the same version ever since. I never update it because it's just too expensive. All right, so we have one six two five. And then we'll just hit copy and paste on the one. Yeah, software is so expensive. They might have like a subscription model though. Actually, when I went to Eau Claire as a student, I would just go to the computer lab and use their version of Sibelius to, to write stuff out. I would just stay there all night, and then I would have a little laptop with Sibelius, and that was, like, way harder to use with the tiny little screen. But, um, yeah, I've gotten so used to Sibelius at this point that it's, like, it's really hard to switch to anything else. So here we go. Okay, so for the C-sharp um, diminished seventh, it's funny how um, this is just straight. Oh, no, this is, yeah, it's italics. Never mind. I was going to say, I thought these eyes were straight, and then it was making it look crooked because of the tilted. Never mind, whatever. Not a conversation worth having. Okay, um, So I'm going to say one sharp one 
diminished. I don't know. Some of these you might have to get a little creative and just come up with your own name for it. That's fine. I'm not, you know, whatever. It's jazz. It's not this same, you know, strict lingo as classical. There's a million ways to think of it, everything in jazz. So it's hard to really think of it. So anyways, I'm just going to leave it there. I want to get to the next thing. But I'm going to save this. Um... Let's see, export as PDF. I could read a book example. So when you look at this, I'll go back. When you look at this um, over your project, when you're like considering how to do this, yeah, let's just rid of the original um just make sure that i'm not i'm not uh saying that you should just go halfway and only do <laughs> eight bars of it i just only did eight bars because i want to move on to the next thing so make sure you do the whole tune like that somehow all right um eric is here good to see you um let me know again if you have any questions on this stuff also, um, of note, if you want to do a midweek meeting of some kind, um, I do have some available daytimes where I can do a 20 minute meeting here or there just to go over a project. So if anyone's totally like confused or lost on something and just wants to sit down with me personally with the project so I can kind of walk them through something, um, you know, I'm here, you know, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> I'm I'm uh, stuck at home just as as everyone else is. Okay. Identify mode scales where possible. Are there any points in the tune where a single mode can be used over a longer stretch of time? And I would say yes. The C major scale can be used for most of the A section. Let's see. And some of the B and C sections. Um, let's see. The, the rest of the tune is short, short lived transitions to. To other keys okay so that's pretty much it I would say uh, you know most of this tune you could probably get away with the C major scale and then on the especially the B section and the C section it goes to some different key areas like F here and uh, G here E minor but in general the majority of this is in C so um okay so that's cool so that's the analysis part so really it shouldn't be that crazy hard um you know rely on your buddies too your friends if you know if you're having a hard time with stuff like you know i bet you have uh, a friend or two that could you know help with some of these concepts like if you're like i have no idea what to call this weird uh, diminished seventh chord you know you could always reach out to me like i said um but you could also reach out to some friends and ask all right so part five application this is kind of like what we do with the other tunes where we do like a performance of the tune so what i'm going to do now is i'm just going to do this for you guys and demonstrate let me flip around my neck strap real quick. And just to be thorough, I'm going to actually uh, I have a logic project up here. 
Uh, I'm going to actually create a new logic project. And I'm actually going to record the example of this to put up there for you all to check out. So the let's see where am I in this? Okay, so record a performance of the melody in a minimum of two choruses of improvisation. Okay. So I'm going to have the lead sheet pulled up here and then I'm going to hit record. Of course, as always, you know, you could simply do this on your phone, uh, iPad, computer, or whatever. If you want to do a more fancy version, you can. But let's see. All right. So I'm just going to actually um, use my metronome just on the... Uh, phone app that I use just a random metronome app nothing fancy all right so if you're newer to um, playing jazz improvisation you could just put the metronome on every click you could also put it on two and four. I'm just going to do it every click right now just to demonstrate. So here's our tempo. I'm going to play the melody and then two choruses of improvisation. Thank you. 
right, so that's two choruses plus the melody. Um, all right, so I took a pretty slow tempo there, which is totally cool. Um, and um, basically, you know, I just tried to, to use the um, metronome. But for a lot of tunes, there are play-alongs available online that you can use for free, which is pretty cool. So if that makes more sense for you, or if you have the iReal Pro or whatever that thing is called, um, that plays like a MIDI backing track, that um, would be a good thing to do. So you could just kind of hear the chords in the background. So if you haven't picked your tune yet and you're feeling like, you know, that might be beneficial, maybe um, you pick a tune where you can find a backing track as well already. So um, so that's pretty much it. Uh, just like we have been doing, just performing it. And uh, the thing with live musicians, probably not very realistic right now. You could have a friend play or, or accompany yourself. You could, let's say you also play piano in addition to a secondary instrument uh, like trumpet or you know sax or something or trombone um, or if you play piano and you want to record two takes of something you record the chords first and then you do a solo over it you can totally do that and that could actually be a, a cool way to do this project and to, to wrap in some music production or whatever um, using like either a software program or one of those apps that does like the acapella thing where you do two tracks and multi-layer them. Um, anyways, so there's a lot of freedom you can have with that. Then the edge, uh, Patrick, uh, I mean, uh, Nick asked about the other logic project. I'll, I will reveal that to you at the end of the class here. I'll, I'll share it with you. Thanks for asking. Um, yeah, I'll show you in a sec. Uh, okay, so I just want to get through the last few questions here. They're pretty fast. So thanks for hanging in there with me. Hopefully this gives you the complete sense of what to do for the project. Um, like I said, I will put this up onto Canvas, and it will be up for you to look at and check out and just reference to make sure that your answers are matching up with the um, sort of the, um, the standards that I'm looking for. All right, so summarize what age or ability levels would be appropriate for this tune. So I might write something like, this tune would probably work well with um, intermediate students or beginners ready to take the next step. This is because the harmony is relatively easy to grasp, but does contain a few curveballs. It would be a good tune to talk about harmony. All right, what are the challenges inherent in this tune? The biggest challenges, the biggest challenges in this tune are the occasional quick, um, quick, what, what is it called? Um, modulations to new key centers. mostly marked by two five ones progressions oh yeah also um i have everything graded for you guys except for the last assignment that you turned in i will do that this week um sorry that i have not finished that yet i think we're all a little bit behind or maybe Maybe not, but we're all a little bit at least in a completely new situation. So um, I will try to get that to you as soon as possible. 
but um, let's see. What are the core concepts the students will learn from playing this piece? They will learn how to play a simple melody well. They will also learn to identify two, five, one progressions and how to identify key centers. This piece also works at a variety of tempos and styles so you could use it to demonstrate um, how to approach tunes with different approaches. All right. Um, what are some ideas for teaching the material in a rehearsal setting? You know, you could write um, having students um, cycle through um, two fives, two five one patterns in the given um, keys, being a, um, maybe having them play the harmony at half speed to really grasp and hear the um, changes better and then etc so you can fi finish your uh, answer for that but um, so yeah then there's a little checklist here so then you can um, fill that out so that's it that's the project so that took about an hour um, and we're all done so I'm just going to save this I'm actually going to save as PDF let's see desktop jazz one jazz improv project one um, final or uh, let's see yeah example that's fine okay so I'll upload that into um, I'll upload that into canvas and then I'll also just send them to an, to you all in an email. That way everyone has it easily for themselves. Um, I have to go soon because um, I'm having a toddler uh, meltdown before bedtime, which is pretty pretty typical day in the life of a toddler. But um, I want to just uh, follow through on what I said about this logic project. So basically this, this is just something I'm messing around with right now. Um, my dad ha my dad has a drum set and so I went over and just recorded some stuff with my phone microphone and uh, basically I'm just kind of producing just something totally at random my the idea for the project is to just play some stuff on a dr on the drums and then import it into logic and then just basically record um, kind of experiment with recording just stuff that fits on it so kind of using the drums as a starting point and then just coming up with something just letting the ideas come so this is this is a short example of what I have so far and that's about it all I have right now but uh, appreciate the interest Nick um, it's a lot of fun being able to compose in in logic okay I gotta go I will see you all soon um, well digitally and let me know if you have any questions all right